Hey folks, Rose here. I'm going to be making a comfrey salve with beeswax and oil. I'm going to take you through it step by step and it's kind of as I go. It's been a long time since I've done this. So let me show you how I get started. The first thing I need to put on is I have a bag of comfrey I harvested. It's actually last year's. I crushed it up and put it in this little measuring cup which has tablespoon markings on it and so I've got eight tablespoons of crushed comfrey. You can actually make a salve with many different herbs but I need a comfrey salve right now. I'm putting it in my little crock pot. I'm going to be adding oil and let that infuse. I'm trying to keep the mess down a little bit with um, <laughs> paper blade underneath but we're going to see how much oil it takes to cover this. I'm measuring in tablespoons just to, so I can have a recipe that's in parts. And yeah, there's a little bit of herbs floating around in that. But that's okay. It almost looks like it's going to be enough to cover. Oh, sorry, can't see that penny. Looking for my little, little wooden spoon, and of course, figured I can't find it. I'm going to use it. Since I can't find my wooden spoon, I'm going to use a spatula. Plastic. Don't use metal. It's just one of those rules of thumb. All I'm doing right now is mixing the comfrey up in this oil. Later, I'm going to be straining the comfrey out. But what I'm really doing at this point is making an herb infused oil, like I did with a calendula not too long ago. So let's see, that was eight tablespoons of herb and eight tablespoons of oil. I want to be able to strain this. And we have something come out of it. I'm going to put a little bit more oil in. Let's do another four tablespoons. Teaspoons, there's tablespoons. So there's another four tablespoons. That's 12 tablespoons of oil. I'll have uh, my proportions down in the show more box below. And I'm going to mix that. And I'm going to turn this on. And I'm going to let it cook. Covered. Making sure it's all mixed. The general rule is that you want your herbs covered with the oil. Some say don't let them cook till they're crispy. Others say let them cook till they're crispy. I don't really think it makes a lot of difference, but you don't want to overcook your herb. It probably destroys the good stuff in it. So I'll be back to you when I get ready to strain and then add beeswax. Just unclog. Just, I just unplugged my crock pot and uh, actually I can see the oil is just starting to bubble a little bit. And one of the ways I always know this is ready is it actually smells like brownies. <laughs> if I had a smell of vision you could tell. Another way you can tell they're ready, oops, it's not trying to spill this, tell this is ready, is um, if you take a little bit and tap it on a plate the oil you can see it's actually green the oil wasn't green when I put it in there okay it was just the color of olive oil which is kind of a yellowish color but this is getting green and the longer it cooks the greener it gets this is actually a pretty small batch oh, this is working out good slow pour to get most of the oil out first and we'll drop the herbs in there probably too much for this one little too much for this one little stringer. That's okay. Okay. Got a little on the edge there. We'll try to, we may have to strain it again. Uh, best thing to do is try to squeeze out as much of that hot oil as you can without getting burned. Not an easy task. And 
get as much as that as you can. I don't want to push on the strainer because it is just a plastic, cheap plastic strainer. But I think that's as much as I'm going to get out of. That's in there. I dump the herb over here. Oh, that is hot. And get the rest of it. There's just a little bit left in here. And grab a pot holder. I can grab it this way and scoop out the rest of these herbs in here. This may come free. And all that good oil. I don't want to waste any of that. So I just cooked for an hour working on. I don't want to waste it. melt my little plastic uh, thing there. I made that mistake one time. Those are really made for mixing up cake mixes, not putting against something real hot. I've melted spatulas before. Oops. I won't bore you with the rest of me squeezing out this oil. I will show you the next step when I get there. Okay, where I'm at at this point, um, I've really gotten as much oil off this strainer as is going to possibly come out. Plastic seems to want to hold on to it. But I have ended up with a nice jar. Let me just move this so you can see it. A nice, good, let's see, a little over half a cup of green, green oil. And I see a little bit more I'm going to have to strain out of there, but I wanted to show you what I have to do with the um, crock pot is I have to wipe out all of ouch, the bits and yes this is still hot. I could wait for it to cool but I really want it to stay hot because I've got to put the oil back in. I now have ooh, ah, hot. My video skills leave something to be desired don't they? I just poured the oil back through the strainer into the pot and it looks clean as clean as I can see you really don't want bits in there of herbs if you can help it I'm sure there's microscopic bits I can't see now I'm not using water to wipe my stuff off because you don't want water getting in there um, that could make your salve go bad. The other reason I like using dried herbs, sometimes people will make an infused oil with fresh herbs and there's really nothing wrong with that, but there is a moisture content to your fresh herb. And that really actually has to cook out so it takes longer. I'm going to plug this back in. I mean, it is still hot. Everything is very hot. And I have one tablespoon of um, beeswax pellets. So I'm going to drop them right in. And the typical ratio of wax to oil is six parts oil to one part wax pellets. Or, well, I use pellets. I just happen to have these little, what they call pastilles, beeswax pastilles. And uh, they're nice small ones which help them melt faster. And you can find beeswax in uh, what they call beads. Uh, these are actually starting to melt already. I don't think you can see that. Let's see if I can bring the camera closer. Let's see if you can see that. And if you can see the little tiny bits of wax in there. Little yellow blobs. They're blending in. So, I don't actually think it's going to take very long. And I'm wondering if that's really enough wax. There's a, you can use a test, like the jelly test, of dropping. It's already all melted. Dropping a bit on a cool plate and see what happens. Let's see if I can find out a small plate. See if it solidifies. 
That's one test. Maybe a drop. I drop on there. And remember, it doesn't have the beeswax in it. Yeah. Well, it's still kind of thin. So I'm going to add a little bit more. It really all depends on the consistency you want. I want this to be real easy to apply um, and spread. Like, okay, let's see, what's this? Another almost tablespoon. I want to be able to uh, spread it easy. Like, you know, with Vaseline, that kind of consistency. So I'm going to melt this other, about a tablespoon. So now I'm at kind of like, uh, let's see. 12 tablespoons of oil to 2 tablespoons of wax now. Oh, sorry folks, I calculated wrong. I had 12 tablespoons of oil and I should have added 2 tablespoons of wax to get the 6 to 1 consistency I want. This is melting pretty quick. I finished melting. That comes the fun part of pouring it into containers. I probably should have uh, heated up a glass jar. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Alright, we're going to try to drop on this plate in a different spot. Let it cool just a little bit. Even though that first one was a little too thin, it's not that bad. But if the container tipped, for example, it might actually leak out. I don't really want it to do that. Well, that's a nice consistency. So when that actually fully hardens in the container, that'll be perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, the next step, I'm just going to actually grab the camera. I've got set up over here. Hang on a sec. I have a couple of, these are half ounce jars with caps. They're clean. And this is a just a small plastic food container to put the rest in. Hopefully that's enough. Yeah, I think it will be. Um, these are just really handy to have, keep in your purse, whatever. And um, you can refill them from there. I recommend always making sure your stuff is sterile, as clean as possible. So I'm going to pour those in, and I'll show you when I get done. I almost forgot something that's actually kind of important. Something that should be added to this is uh, beeswax, um, vitamin E. It's not absolutely necessary, and it really depends how much you make and how fast you use it. But the vitamin E acts as a preservative. So, I just happen to have some vitamin E capsules. Each one is 200 IUs. So, I'm going to open up each one of these carefully with a very sharp knife. Oops, squeeze out the vitamin E oil right in there. You can buy vitamin E oil by the bottle if you're making a lot of something. Um, unfortunately, the bottle I had was very old. So, Vitamin E is preservative as well as it'll be good for the skin I'm applying it to, this concoction. So I'm going to mix that in and then pour stuff into my containers and I'll get back to you. Okay, I have the wax, uh, wax, the uh, salve poured into my containers. And of course I spilled some, no big deal. That's already hardened. And a word to the wise. Keep your tools that you use to make salves and herbal medicines separate from the things you use to eat with. Because um, sometimes you might get, you might be making something that is not something you want taken internally. I've made other salves in the past, for example, that have contained arnica. 
that is something you do not want to take internally. So, if you're doing an internal type concoction, that's a whole different story. But I'm making a salve that is very much an external use salve. So I'm using my external use tools. And I recommend you have, I do actually have a wooden spoon. I would normally have used for this. Uh, but you can find it, of course. So I had used this. But this is okay. For this particular application, this is okay. Comfort, comfort won't hurt you internally. So I just got that set. When it's all set and dried, I will show you how it's come out. It probably will take a few hours for that beeswax to set up. Okay, folks, here's my finished product. Actually, I have um, two containers I filled, plus this third one. And it gelled up nicely. So it's beeswax and oil. Oil that was infused with comfrey stuff, or comfrey dried herb. And to give you an idea of the texture, this one I've already opened. I'm using it on my dog's hot spots. So the texture is kind of nice, actually. It um, spreads really well. Okay, let's put it down. Kind of, it looks like Vaseline when you put it on, but it's an oil and wax base, not a petroleum base. So, great for the skin, great for bruises. Actually, I've got some bruises and scratches that could really use it right now myself. But I am using this one on the dog, and it's dedicated to him. So that's it, as far as making a comfrey salve using beeswax and all. Thanks for watching.